I am pleased to invite to the stage Roy Heffernan, who will introduce Mickey Heineken. How amazing is our uh, Panther football team this year at 8 No, oh, My goodness. So excited, so excited. Coach Ritter and his staff are knocking on the door of the first uh, undefeated 9-0 and season uh, ever in the history of mid. I don't mind talking about it. They're getting ready. The boys are ready. More importantly, I've come to learn of the class and strong character of our current team. Ritt and his staff have done a terrific job there. I also would add that this level of success does not happen without the foundation that Mickey built over his 28 years of coaching, leading, and mentoring so many, including Coach Ritter and our AD, Aaron Quinn. As Coach Ritter took over the reins in 2001, I know that he was bracing himself for regular comments from his coach, his former coach, Mick. Ritt could count on that cowboy hat sitting at the 50-yard line, regardless of the weather. We all knew that Mick would not be able to help himself. True to form, the post-game feedback from Mick started on that very first Saturday and has not abated since. Truth be told, Ritt hangs on to every word from Mick and has always valued his advice. Mick has come by his uh, propensity to share his game critique honestly. You see, back in the 70s, when Mick started his long tenure here, he'd, he would come off the field basking in his latest victory, and his savvy mom, Vera, who was about four foot nothing, would look up at Mick and say, why did you run the counter crisscross in the third play of the second quarter? With this Hall of Fame award, while this Hall of Fame award is athletics-based, Mick has proven himself to be an all-around Hall of Famer. Of course, Mick is a Hall of Fame coach. He's never ceased finding ways to coach and motivate uh, along the way. Just look at the obstacle course that he has disguised as his front walkway at his home. He has cleverly designed it to challenge Carol to maintain her agility. <laughs> Carol has taken some falls of late, actually quite nasty falls, and I'm not sure she's uh, quite living up to the preseason hype. But to Mick's credit, he has stuck by her and not cut her from the team. <laughs> it's an excellent decision, Coach. Beyond athletics, he's also a, a Hall of Fame dad to Kevin, Don, and Kerry. He's a Hall of Fame community leader for the college and for the town of Middlebury. And he is a Hall of Fame writer, as demonstrated by his travel blog, where he has humbly refers to himself as the dude. <laughs> and he refers to his amazing travel companion, Carol, as the chick. If anyone can justify that nickname, it is his beautiful wife, Carol. Mick is also a Hall of Fame and skilled carpenter, as showcased by his dedication and leadership with the local Habitat for Humanity. In a similar manner that we are always parents, regardless of the age of the child, Mick is always our coach. His coaching now takes the form of a loyal friend, mentor and leader to all of his former players. Our Panther family recently lost one of our very own. This year, J.B. Hayes died of ALS. Prior to his death, J.B.'s uh, friends and his fans got together at a, a Boston microbrewery, and Mick drove his uh, eight hours to and from this gathering to make sure that he was there with his authentic caring and genuine love. And Mick exhibits that time and time again. 
and it stands as a blueprint for each of us, his players and his fans, on how to live our lives. He continually demonstrates a powerful way to treat each other with respect, loyalty, and care. I'm not sure that Mick fully appreciates the powerful impact that he has upon each one of us. So have you ever been asked, why did you choose Middlebury? Have you been asked, why are you so loyal to your college? How about what it means to have a coach whose on-field prowess pales in comparison to the values that we all learned from him? Let me introduce to you our beloved coach and all-around Hall of Famer, Mickey Heineken. Thanks, Jeff. That was awesome. Don't worry, I'm not going to do poetry. <laughs> this will be tough enough. <clears throat> you all know that um, the saying that no man is an island unto himself. Uh, in truth, uh, all of us being honored here tonight are living examples of that statement. Sharing my island with me for the last 57 years has been the rock and love of my life, referred to quite a bit in the speech, my wife Carol. It's time for you to be honored. She has been my moral conscience and a constant reminder to me of the power of love, as well as being the mother who raised our fantastic and wonderfully different kids, Kevin, Dawn, and Carrie, who made the journey here tonight. And together right now, Carol and I are enjoying seeing our grandkids, Haley, Tyler, Lindsay, and Keegan, and delighting uh, in the process of watching them grow up in front of our very eyes. None of the athletes that are um, being honored here tonight, in fact, I would say um, none of you would be who you are tonight if it wasn't for the fact that many very, a whole bunch of different folks added their own special ingredients to the recipe that was eventually mixed together and became you and your own unique self. That has certainly been the case for me. I've been blessed, I was blessed, by having coaches at the high school and college level who were committed educators in the truest sense of the word and in their own subtle ways were responsible for me choosing a coaching career. I will be forever grateful to Dave Nelson, Tubby Raymond, and Mike, Mike Clude, who were my college coaches, for instilling me in me a, an appreciation for the unique values that the game of football brings with it. I've also been able to work under AEDs, Dick Coleman, Tom Lawson, Russ Riley, who always had my back. I'm very proud to have served with the coaching staffs that these men created here at Middlebury, and I cherish the friendship that formed with all my peers, most of whom are here tonight, over my 30 years of coaching at Middlebury College. 
by pure luck, and it literally is just pure luck. I lived in a gilded age of athletics, both as a player and as a coach. Youth sports had not yet run amok. There was no such thing as an elite eight-year-old soccer team. A camp was where you went to canoe, to hike, and have fun. Not where you went to show off your scholarship skills. Instead, my afternoons were spent playing pickup hoops or touch football with my neighborhood buddies. And there was nary an adult in sight. I didn't, thank you. Kind of a pet peeve. I didn't have shoulder pads on until I was in ninth grade. And then when I put them on, I actually used them to block somebody. I, they weren't handholds for some defensive lineman to use when they were rushing the passer. Now that's kind of an inside joke just for the few coaches that are here. Um, but they understand, and I put that in just for you, Rit. <laughs> Having a chance to come to Middlebury uh, and coach here was a fulfillment of a dream come true. In many ways, Carol and I came of age here as we watched our kids grow up and leave the area, and we became part of a resilient and wonderful community. It seems like only yesterday that Carol and I were driving up Route 30 for our job interview, and I walked into later on um, to my first meeting with a group of shaggy, long-haired, hippie-looking players in Monroe Lounge. This was 1973. I was wearing my peace belt back then while spiting off some crazy talk about the pursuit of excellence. I was the first of many players, groups of players, to hear my incessant plea for them to pursue excellence, not just on the football field, but in all aspects of their life. I cha cherished the challenge of delivering that message and now take great pride in seeing that message being received so by so many. For those of you that journeyed here tonight, thank you for being part of that. The journey from my first meeting until my last game as a Panther was not traveled alone. My first staff here, Rob Pfeiffer, Charlie Brush, Pete Sunheim, without any hesitation at all, committed to the idea of the pursuit of excellence and committed to the idea without any hesitation, and they helped set a standard of loyalty that I take pride in knowing is embedded in our present Panther football program. The road traveled with all my assistant coaches over the years it was a l literal blast. Lots and lots of laughs, a few tears, I guess, but never a dull moment. Honestly, there was never a time that I didn't want to come into the office. One of my toughest retirement experiences was saying goodbye to my last staff, Bill Mandigo, Bob Ritter, Aaron Quinn, and no one is prouder than me to see them setting personal standards of excellence that as far as Middlebury is concerned, will remain unsurpassed. I've been extremely fortunate to have found a home at Middlebury. It's a college that truly values the role that sports can play in the overall educational process. I could not be prouder than to have played a small role in that process. Cheer, boys, cheer. It's great to be a Panther. <laughs>